Welcome to the Tongue of the Trees. I'm Elizabeth Ashley, the Secret Healer, and this video is What is Monada Essential Oil Good For? So potentially this is a back to front system because most of the people who will want to know that will be people who already know me and perhaps have already got the cards and they've drawn a Tongue of the Trees card out where it says motivation. For the keyword if you haven't seen the tongue of the trees cards here they are available on um, amazon uk and also from fragrant earth and the school of aromatic studies in america monada now incidentally this video i've made specifically for one of my new friends adam barrelet also has a youtube channel with a lot more subscribers on than i have <laughs> On, his, on YouTube and he sent me a message the other day and said I need to pick your brains you I've listened to this podcast that you did and it was fascinating and then they asked you your favorite oils and predictably you said geranium because yes everybody knows it's my best friend but also then you said monada what's up with monada I've never heard of it what is it so this is for you, Adam, to tell you everything that I know about Monada essential oil, which of course is also in my book. There's more in the book, actually. It's not everything that I know. This is two videos. This particular video you're watching now is about physical medicine. I would invite you to come across. Have a look in the description below and you'll see a link to the next video which talks about the emotional, the mental, the spiritual aspects of the oil, as well as how to blend it and its safety connotations. So let me tell you how I came upon Monada oil, because you're quite right, it's not a popular oil, but it's what just so beautiful. Um, when I was carrying my youngest child back in 2008, I started coughing very badly and eventually started coughing up blood and it was diagnosed that I had blood clots in my lungs, I had a pulmonary embolism. So I was given anticoagulant drugs but not aggressively because I was pregnant and so for a year really I was left with in limbo waiting for something to happen with this awful lung that I was left with and it was too long. The funny thing was the second that Dexter was born I could feel that I felt better. There's a definite strange connection between that huge great big lump of child and whatever lump was in my uh, lung because I could breathe better immediately he'd gone. But there we go. But I was left with a very compromised lung and when he was about three we left the city and we moved to here, to Shropshire, to Ludlow. Anyone who has been to Ludlow will say to you, why did you go, move to somewhere with so many hills? <laughs> and it would be an extremely valid point. But I was so enchanted with the lovely black and white buildings and the thatched cottages that there were, nobody would have told me. And then Dexter moved to a school that was up the hill, which... In my books came to be known as Mordor because it's like that and I'd be <gasps> so my life was really geared around trying to find ways not to climb the hill and I figured that's never right in a million years I need to do something about this I've got all these essential oils let's go and see what we can do so anyone who knows me will tell you that I have a flippity gibbered brain that goes, that's a good idea, that's a good idea, that's a good idea. So the only way that I ever focus on something is to sit down and write a book about it and then let it become my obsession. So healing my lungs became my obsession. And the outcome of that book was a book about how to heal chronic bronchitis. It's on Amazon and it has an orange cover. But in amongst all of the clinical trials that I was looking at, of which there are many into essential oils that do not are not commercially available. 
I came across an interesting piece of uh, knowledge that said there is a way to heal scarring in your lungs and that's to use um, tea malt or geranial both will do the job and I was like what did you just say what did you just say so I thought right well how am I going to do some how am I going to leverage that strange piece of information and so I figured I know I've got Tissa Randon Young 2013 on my Kindle what if I search by keyword of Timol and um, geranial or perhaps some people will say Timol um, which I did and what came up was an oil I had never heard of. I thought, well, I'm never going to be able to get Monada essential oil. Never heard of it. What on earth is it? I bet it smells disgusting. So I managed to find just a strange little link on Amazon to a French company called Huyesson, um, who... Yes, they had some. So I sent for it and eagerly opened my parcel and went, Oh, it smells like a piece of heaven. <laughs> it's very light, dusty kind of fragrance, which is like, <coughs> excuse me, that breathing. A cross between apples and lemons. Just beautiful. And that <gasps> is exactly what you always do when you breathe it. It's not just the delight, although it is delightful. And that's very much part of the medicine. But it just immediately, you can feel it going straight into your lungs. And it is a specific for respiratory, uh, respiratory disease. I always say it's the first line of defence. If you get an acute infection, um... Perhaps under, interesting to understand the difference between acute and chronic in this um, context. I had got chronic bronchitis. I had got COPD, chronic obstructory pulmonary disease. Um, and that's bronchitis or some kind of lung illness that has gone on for six months or more. Acute bronchitis is an infection. It is indicated for acute bronchitis it is indicated for chronic bronchitis so pulmonary right across the um, gamut and note the, the case i said i had chronic pulmonary disease it's gone and actually three weeks of using it I, it had gone i could definitely feel a difference now bear in mind my blood clot had gone you know there were all that was left was maybe an emotional scar maybe a physical scar but it was there you know and three weeks i could zoop up that hill amazing absolutely amazing so it's a strange one because it, as far as i can remember and i haven't looked it up before i did this video it doesn't have strong le levels of t ketones i can't see how it could possibly have because then you wouldn't be able to use it for babies which we'll talk about in a minute but it does have like a esoteric metaphysical imprint of ketones so where ketone ketones disincarnate they break things down so does monada so in cases of um, qatar or phlegm it kind of has that sort of melting effect and it's very yin, very yin medicine, very passive, very submissive, very feminine. Um, and you could just feel that melting. And of course, you could say that about the scar tissue. That would be an indication of um, ketones, but the ketones are in the oil. But that same thing of melting it down, just dissipating it. And when we talk about the um, emotional medicine and the spiritual medicine, that melting effect is really important so obviously after i'd finished doing the the um bronchitis book i went on to write the monada book um it's a bit of a con from the point of view of the picture this is monada didema um but the oil is taken from monada fistulosa it looks exactly the same except imagine the color of my walls on those petals and that is it it's perhaps a softer um more powdery fragrance on the um on the fistulosa um i as i went on to collect i think we have about 30 different species of monada in the garden now 
different colours, different vibrations, different uh, chemotypes, but uh, she and I just enjoy the most beautiful friendship because as soon as something starts to wind me up, as soon as I start to feel as if I am getting a cough or a cold or a headache, then she comes out. When I was researching herbal medicine, there's a beautiful passage written by a, a tremendous herbalist called Kiva Rose, whom I absolutely love, Kiva Rose's work. And she talks about how when you use Monada, you feel like you're flying away on butterfly wings. And that's absolutely true. It's just so delicate. It feels like things are just fizzing away from you. And this butterfly wings yin feeling informs all of the medicine this feeling of it breaking down resistance so for example if somebody has got a cough or a cold and they're the kind i mean <laughs> kind of lockdown's putting a pay to it now but but i've still got to go to work Menada goes okay it'll still be there and you go Okay, I'm oh, going to bed. <laughs> it wipes, it does wipe you out. Those feelings of indigestion or dyspepsia where one feels like, oh, I just feel like I've got a blockage. The subtitle of the book, sorry, it's back to front, is a Native American uh, medicine and it grows like a weed all over um, North America by rivers in particular that likes water and um the lakota people use throw monada leaves and flowers into the water the bath water of their newborns as a way to strengthen but i always say it's a bit like mm, lavender is a, like a hug off your mom monada is like a hug off your nan you know you can't do anything wrong you know, she'll just excuse you anything. You still get the hug, you know? Whereas your mum might still tell you off. Nan's never going to, is she? <laughs> you know, it's that kind of softness. But this idea of just melting away is something that I've thought about a lot over the past few weeks. With constipation, when you look at oils that are indicated for constipation to my mind most of them have a yin element to them this kind of melting sensation to them for example rose rose is laxative isn't it very yin very feminine <sighs> the softness the passiveness headaches is a really interesting one um there's two different sort of ways of looking at headaches and actually we make a headache roller ball in the recipe hub this month for you to keep in your bag and you know how you go out for a beer with your mates and you've got different friends that you do different things with haven't you so i've got um friends that i'd go with a coffee with those that i will dance on the table with probably they're not the same people and i wouldn't really go to the same places with them and not necessarily the friends mix you know there's different aspects of the personality that go famously i don't have a friendship with rosemary oil she and i are not friends <laughs> she's too bossy she's too spiky for me but the other oil apart from rosemary that i would choose for um headaches is basil also very bossy but good bossy you know really has your back she's really sassy i mean i just don't like rosemary and the words coming out of my mouth sound the same but they're just not i couldn't really put my finger on why i don't like her but i don't now imagine that you have a headache and you are very stressed and 
somebody you don't like comes out the woodwork and you're not going to really sit down and want to listen to them are you so for that reason i don't really get on well with rosemary in a headache blend basil and i yes we're happy but on the days where I have a migraine, where I'm oversensitised, where there's too much light, too much Dexter's noise, too much <laughs> everything, the dog, Monada just goes, go to bed. Go inwards, go into the darkness, just be on your own, quiet. Whereas Basil's like, we can get through this. It's fine come on think i will help you clear your head i'll clear your head rosemary would go right focus even thinking about her i want to hit her <laughs> but they both have the same thing of like you've got to get through this focus whereas bernarda goes work this out quietly on your own and we'll talk about that much much more in the second video um the chemistry of Monada essential oil lends itself perfectly for wound healing um, whereas helichrysum is for the wound that will not heal and would be for you know bangs now imagine if a little one fell over you'd get the lavender out you'd get the chamomile out i'd get the monada out you know different but helichrysum definitely would put on my husband every single time as dexter's getting older helichrysum but when he was little Menarda. um an interesting thing that we don't really talk about very often is the power of the talcum powder for athlete's foot and whilst it is indicated for athlete's foot i have to say i would always use tea tree as first line of defense but if one doesn't do all the work with washing the socks with the tea tree and getting rid of the trainers and getting new trainers and what have you, it has a habit of coming back, doesn't it? And we've all had boys who've got revolting feet. So these talcs are really, really helpful. Um, so if you just get like a blank talc and and you can buy that from like beauty wholesalers or even I use baby powder sometimes, take the top off. Pour in the Menage oil, 10, 15, 20 drops, quite a lot. Close it up again before you shake it, before otherwise you have a shower of snow everywhere. Close it up again, shake it, put it aside for two or three weeks and the Menage cooks right the way through. Um, cook, it, you don't cook it, it just cooks itself because obviously the volatiles dissipate through the essential oil. Think how butterfly wings crawling the way through and touching all of the um, tiny tiny little um, powder what do we call them granules I guess so then just using a foot powder with the Menada a is so refreshing because it's very very cooling um, very very just softening you know relaxing but also will stop with the reinfection of the athlete's foot intellectually we can say right well geraniol probably has a bearing on um gynecolo gynecological issues but also esoterically if we think it's a very yin oil then we can say yes probably would lend itself to um gynecology and it's wonderful it's absolutely wonderful one of the recipes that we have in the hub this um this week is for a compress for menstrual problems think about the, all the elements that we've talked about we can tell you it's very softening passive um to the emotional um side which will as i say next video but it is so it has that kind of anti-conflict nature to it not saying a word about your pmt not saying the word you know yourself but also think about how it, um, you know, how you have cramping, um, it will soften that, or also clotting breaks down that feeling um, and that actual physical clot. So very, very useful, but also because it has a very cooling nature, extremely good for menopausal hot flushes, for um, 
night sweats, all of those things, just that just meltingness of uh, Monada is really, really helpful. Um, I feel like I haven't talked about digestion or maybe I um, skimmed over it when I was talking about obstruction. I would definitely use it for colic. I would use it for griping abdominal pains, dyspepsia. It's very good for aiding and speeding digestion. So you know how I said things sort of melt. Imagine that you have that feeling of indigestion. It's like, it's, oh, I can, can't get past it. Um, so on my slide, it says antibacterial. It also says strengthening and supportive, which we will talk about more in the next video, but also tonic to the liver and gallbladder. In Chinese medicine, the emotion of the liver is anger. The motion of the gallbladder is worry. Both are distinctly connected to stress, particularly work stress, long term stress and how the, the liver becomes dysfunctional and toxic as the dysfunction starts. The reason why I'm halting is because I don't really want to get into talking about the adrenals because it's not relevant to the to Monada. So I'm going to say it's not relevant, but we need to know it. OK, so when you are stressed and your um, HPA axis, uh, hypothalamus, uh, pituitary gland, adrenals is on overdrive. The adrenals, to begin with, secrete anti-inflammatory um, cortisol. And immediately you go, no, cortisol is not anti-inflammatory. Yes, it is to begin with. When it's responding to short-term stress, it is. But then it kind of turns on its axis if the, if the stress continues and the HPA axis doesn't turn off and the cortisol secretion is not turned off, then it takes on an inflammatory nature. So this is where we see all of these inflammatory diseases coming into play. Of course, there is not a unending supply of cortisol. There isn't a reservoir. So after a while, the adrenals go, I just can't handle this anymore. I can't <laughs> it gets stressed. Can you believe it goes into meltdown and it has to draw off its friends. So it draws from the power of the pituitary gland, which is obviously hormones. This is where we start to see stress related um, period problems, stress related impotence. All of those things is from that the um, overdrive starting to draw from the pituitary. But more regularly, it will draw from the liver and the liver is, does so many things, you know such a clever organ it's just the foreman of the um the body but no matter how generous he is he too does not have a um an unending reservoir so what happens is the liver begins to wane it starts to kind of well at the moment, if we're firing on all four cylinders, like a grapefruit day where we're like, woo, we can say 100%. But then liver goes, yeah, but no. No, I've given so much to the adrenals. I'm at 70%. Right. Well, at 70%, we can't have a 70%. We need 100%. So what the body does then is fills up the rest of the 30% with toxicity. And then we start to see these problems with like atopic diseases where the stress related problems turn into eczema, psoriasis, migraine. And we've gone in a circle, haven't we? Because we're back in headache again. So whilst it's not necessarily an oil I would use for eczema and psoriasis, it's not. But if it's eczema and psoriasis in somebody who will not stop working, Mm. then we are if it's ex in psoriasis in somebody that you can just see worry 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 then we use that door in 
use Menada that way. But that's a different lesson. So that is um, how I would use it for physical medicine. And I've got a quick list here. I've mentioned a few of what recipes we've put in the Recipe Hub this month. Recipe Hub is a, a monthly subscription um, product where there are videos like this, but about five, seven minutes where I talk through exactly why we've used each oil and how many drops and contraindications and the blending of each uh, recipe. So the recipes that we have done this week for Monada are, we've made a massage oil for constipation. We've made a lotion for dyspepsia. We've made um, the blend that I keep in the house all of the time called Frontline Defence. So as soon as somebody looks like they're starting to cough, because I do want to eat cake and so I need to be able to go into the shops without being thrown out with, for the risk of COVID when it's just a splutter. So frontline defence. Also a rollerball for headaches to keep in your handbag. Um, a lovely compress for menstrual problems called menstrual mothering and a respiratory blend just for, you know, all manner of respiratory. And so those are just a few because there are also esoteric and metaphysical ones where we have recipes for the emotional, mental and spiritual aspects of Renarda oil. But that's in the next video. So come across now and find out more about what is Renarda essential oil good for.